right, chemistry students, here is your um, teaching video for the corrections of ChemQuest 17, the quantum numbers. Okay, and remember before that after we did ChemQuest 16, we had this scheme where we had an energy level, and within an energy level we had a sublevel, and there were four types of sublevels. You could have an S, a P, a D, or an F. And then each sublevel had an orbital. Also remember that the S sublevel, okay, the S has one orbital, the P has three orbitals, the D has five orbitals, and the F has seven orbitals. Okay, so that's what we had talked about before. So quantum numbers. Quantum mechanics is a set of complex mathematics that is used to describe the most probable location of an electron. Shortly after Bohr, a man by the name of Heisenberg proposed an uncertainty principle, which stated that it is impossible to know both the exact position and the exact velocity of a small particle at the same time. The location of an electron in an atom is based on probability, the most likely location for an electron. To locate the most probable location of a person, you need four things. If you know four things, the state, the city, the street, and the house number, then you will know the most probable location of the person. You also need four things called quantum numbers to describe the most probable location for an electron. Each number is actually symbolized by a letter. So table one, quantum number, and what the quantum number tells us. The principal quantum number, n, is which energy level the electron is in. The azimuthal quantum number, l, is which sublevel within the energy level the electron is in. The magnetic quantum number, ml, is which orbital within the sublevel the electron is in. And the spin quantum number, ms, is the direction of the electron spin clockwise or counterclockwise. The four quantum numbers, n, L, ML, and MS come from a very complex equation. Together, all four of them, N, L, ML, MS, will describe the most probable location of an electron, kind of like how X, Y, and Z describes the location of a point on a graph. Rules governing what values quantum numbers are allowed to have. So quantum number n is allowed to have values of 1, 2, 3, and 4, whole numbers. L is allowed to be 0, 1, 2, integers up until n minus 1. ML is from negative L, all the numbers through 0, and then to positive L. And MS, positive 1 half or negative 1 half. So for the examples... If n equals 3, then the electron is in the third energy level, and L is allowed to have only a value of 0, 1, or 2. It cannot equal anything higher than 2 because n minus 1 equals 2. So one of the things that they've just told us here is that my energy level is my n quantum number. And this right here, right, says integers up to n minus 1. So if n is 3, then n minus 1 is 2. If L equals 1, then ML is allowed to have values of negative 1, 0, and 1. Because if L is 1, then this can be minus L to 0 to positive L. If L equals 2, then ML is allowed to have a value of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. MS can only be plus my might, plus one half, meaning that the electron is spinning clockwise, or minus one half, meaning that the electron is spinning counterclockwise. So number one asks, or tells us, using the quantum numbers, explain why each of the following is not an allowed combination of quantum numbers. The first one is done for you. So let's kind of go back to this for just one second, right? This is N, this is the L, okay? Now, which orbital you're in, that's going to be the ML. And then remember, after our orbital, 
we have our electron, and that's e that's going to be the ms. Now ms can only be plus one half or minus one half. Okay. Um, the rules for n these have to be whole numbers. This is up to n minus 1, okay? And then this is minus l dot 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 0 dot 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 positive l, okay? To kind of help us with this. So, question number 1 says we want to use these quantum numbers, okay? And so they do the first one for us. Right? They say 3, 4, 1, plus 1 half. So 3, when n equals 3, l can only have values of 0, 1, or 2. Right? Because n equals 3, 3 minus 1 equals 2. So I can have values of 0, 1, or 2. Okay? So this part here is wrong. Here, however, l has a value of 4, which is impossible. So 2, when n equals 2, then I can have my L can be up to n, which is 2 minus 1, which is 1. So that's okay. So 2 is okay, 1 is okay. Now, my ML is negative L to 0 to positive L. So if my L is 1, which it is here, then my values for ML can be negative 1, 0, positive 1. Notice that's what's wrong here. There's a negative 2, and you can't have a negative 2 for a value here. Minus 1 half would be okay. That just would mean it's spinning counterclockwise. All right, our next one. n equals 1, that's fine. For l, then, it has to be 1 minus 1, which is 0 which is fine. When my L is 0, I can only have 0, so that's fine. But remember, okay, my MS either has to be plus 1 half or minus 1 half. This is 1, so that's what's wrong here. If N equals 4, what are the possible values of L? Right, so again, L is up to n minus 1. So n minus 1, 4 minus 1 equals 3. So L can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. Any of those are possible values. If L equals 3, what are the possible values for ML? ML is negative L through 0 to positive L. So if L is 3, I can have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. So those would be my possible values. So fill in the blanks in the following table. So sublevels that are possible, remember when n equals 1, I can only have one sublevel, which is my s. When n equals 2, I can have two sublevels, s and p. When n equals 3, I can have three sublevels, which are going to be my s, my p, my d. And when n equals, n equals 4, I can have s, p, d, and f, right? So remember, n is equal to the total, the number of different sublevels possible. Now, this is asking us about our L, right? This, which is up to n minus 1. So, if n equals 1, 1 minus 1 is, I can only have 0. When n equals 2, n or 2 minus 1 is 1, so I can only have 0 and 1. When n equals 3, 3 minus 1 is 2, so I can only have 0, 1, and 2. When n equals 4, 
minus 1, which is 3, I can only have values of 0, 1, 2, and 3. Given the above table and remembering that the quantum number L tells us which sublevel, S, P, D, or F, complete the following statements. The first one is done for you. For an S sublevel, L equals 0. So notice all of these have an S in them, and what number do they all have in common? 0. For a P sublevel, L equals, well, here's a P, here's a P, here's a P. What other number do these three all have in common? 1. For a D sublevel, L equals, here are my Ds. What number do they have in common? 2. And the F sublevel is 3. So what I can add kind of back to this chart over here is that this is going to be an L equal to 1. This is an L, sorry, this is an L equal to 0. An L equal to 1, an L equal to 2, and an L equal to 3. Correlating quantum numbers and sublevels. So my as methyl quantum number L, 0, 1, 2, 3. My sublevel is S sublevel, P sublevel, D sublevel, F sublevel. The number of orbitals possible is one sublevel, or one orbital possible, 3, 5, and 7. Right? That's what we have down here. S has one orbital, P has 3, D has 5, F has 7. Now, my possible ML values, notice, when I only have one possible orbital, I only have one value for ML. Here I have three possible orbitals, and I have negative one, zero, and positive one. So, three values. Five, one, two, three, four, five values. Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven values. Do you think that's a clinky dink? No, not a clinky dink. Okay, so how many ML values are possible for a D sublevel? There were seven. How many orbitals are there for a D sublevel? Seven. Sorry, I'm reading not very well today. How many ML levels are there possible for a D sublevel? There were five. How many orbitals were there? Five. How many for an F? There are seven values. How many orbitals are there? Seven. Comparing your answers for six and seven and your answers for eight and nine, what correlation exists between the number of orbitals and the number of ML values possible? Right, so what do we see? Five values, five orbitals. Seven values, or seven values, yep, seven orbitals, okay? So the person who wrote this ChemQuest answered this one this way. They said the number of possible ML values equals the number of orbitals for a sublevel, okay? So um, number of ML values equals the number of orbitals in the sublevel. So what that is meaning is that each value of ML equals a specific orbital. So correlating quantum numbers to what you already know. So this was on ChemQuest 16. 3, that means that n has to be 3 because that is the energy level for the third energy level. P, right, this is my L. And for a P sublevel, my L is 1. So 1. Now, in my P, right, S has a value of ML of just 0. P has 
negative 1, 0, positive 1. D has negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2. And F has negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. Right, these were our ML values. So what this is saying here is in our P we can have negative 1, so the first one's a negative 1. This is the 0, this is my positive 1. Those correspond to the three lines. This MS is positive 1 half because it's spinning upwards. So the quantum numbers for this above diagram are 3 because this is my N, 1 because this is my L, negative 1 because this is my ML and this electron happens to be in the first of the three orbitals and plus one half because this is my spin. So question 11 says, explain why the set of quantum numbers N, L, M, L, M, S is 4, 3, negative 2, negative 1 half for the following electron. Right, 4 is this principal quantum number. 3 this is my L, and when L equals 3, I'm in an F sublevel. That's why there's an F there. Now, negative 2. So we know F sublevel, I'm going to have 7 lines here. My 7 values are right here. So this is my negative 3, this is my negative 2 my negative 1, 0, my positive 1, my positive 2, my positive 3. So in this example, why is this ML negative 2? Because it's in this second line. And then my MS is negative 1 half because my arrow is pointing down. So number 12 asks us to draw an orbital diagram for an electron whose quantum numbers are 5, 2, 0, plus 1 half. So this is my N, my L, my ML, my MS. N, fifth energy level, so I'm going to write the number 5 because that's my main energy level. Now L equals 2. When L equals 2, I'm in a D sublevel, so I'm going to do a D. Now, a D sublevel has five orbitals, so I'm going to go ahead and draw five lines. One, two, three, four, five. And now I'm going to go ahead and label them with the MLs, because D MLs are negative 2 to positive 2. So this is my negative 2, my negative 1, 0, my positive 1, my positive 2. Okay, so 5 gave me this 5, 2 gave me this D, 0. That means I'm in this third orbital. Okay, so that means I'm going to be here. And plus 1 half means that I am spinning clockwise, so I'm going to be an up arrow. So that is the end of that chem quest, right? So it might be a good idea to have some notes that kind of look like this to help you put all of this information together, right? Remember this is clockwise and this is counterclockwise. Again, why is this so important? Because all of the chemistry of an atom is because of what the electrons are doing. So knowing where the electrons are is going to determine what the electron, what the atom does when it forms chemical reaction and such. All right. I hope that helps. Have a good day.